Sinister here with another Black Ops training video. Today we're going to be talking about the OODA loop or the combat decision process. Improving this process and shortening its time will greatly improve your ability at Black Ops or any Call of Duty game. In the upper right hand corner you'll notice an animation. This is a visual representation of the combat decision process or mental process you go through continuously throughout this game and any combat. The first element in the OODA process is observe. Now observe is any information coming in that you see or hear with any of your senses. It's also information that you're not only just taking in and processing, but you're that also information that you're instinctively reacting to. The second O in the OODA loop is orient. Now orienting is not just turning towards a target, but recognition of the information coming in and then beginning the last two steps in the process. Now, the last two letters in OODA are the D and the A, the decide and action. And hopefully these happen almost simultaneously. Now the ultimate goal is that your decision and action process almost becomes instinctual. The faster this happens, the shorter your OODA loop. And the faster your loop, the greater chance you have of getting inside your opponent's loop and gaining an advantage, especially in a combat situation. So how does this break down in practicality? Let's look at an opening rush here in stadium. Any person in front of me, because this is the initial rush, will be an opponent. So my observations, decision, or an orientation is already in process. Now I know that the middle route is a quicker route than those stair routes. So my first view has to be in the middle to be cautious of an opponent coming that way. Now my decision and action process is already in place, so I move to the stairs to engage a secondary opponent that might be coming that way. Now I know my opponent's cycle is engaged now that I've fired. So I need to be ready with a decision to either move, strafe, or drop shot. In this case, I drop shot. So you see, in this process, the only way that I gained the advantage of my opponents was thinking ahead. I had an idea of where they were coming. I had a general understanding of the routes that they could take to get to me. But I had a plan in place that began to cycle the instant I saw the first opponent and continued to cycle until I was in the clear. Now let's really quick run down some things that can improve our observation time. A good monitor to play on, a headset, audio, auditory input, in-game equipment like a motion sensor, a Claymore, UAV, or Blackbird. These are all critical in helping you observe incoming stimulus. Now things that can hurt you or hurt your opponents. Somebody running ghost, ninja, reduces the sound. Fatigue, alcohol late at night to the person who's playing. Even excessive complaining can lead to reduced observation time. If you're doing it, you're being distracted. If your teammate's doing it, then it can distract you from what you're seeing and what you're hearing. And finally, moving too fast. If it's getting late at night and you're, or you're dying a lot, maybe you're moving too fast. You need to slow down so that your observation skills can catch up to your dynamic play. Things that help with orientation. Your map knowledge, lines of sight, experience, spawn awareness. So you recognize if you see somebody in front of you, most likely they're going to be an enemy, especially on an initial run. Next is the decision-making process, your experienced pre-arranged actions in your mind. Predetermined actions you're going to take if you run into an opponent, whether you're going to drop shot or strafe. These are important, and this goes hand in hand with your final actions. Now your actions are determined on your weapon types. If you're running a shotgun, your actions are going to be different if you have a long range rifle. Here are also a practice set of combat moves like strafing, drop shot, jump shot. And the most talented rushers tend to back up while firing. These are all prearranged actions that shorten this decision making cycle. So this is the why. Why do we use area patrol? Why use concealment and cover? It all leads back to the decision-making cycle and how it shortens it. It allows you to get inside your opponent's cycle. If you have less areas to view, your observation window will be shorter than your opponent's. So when you watch good players, I want you to pay attention not just to their lines that they're rushing, but pay attention to their loop. What are they doing to get inside of their opponent's loop? Hopefully this hasn't been too technical. If anything you take out of this, think about your decision-making process early. Make this cycle as short as you can. Think about what you're going to do if you run into combat. Think ahead. Think ahead. Think ahead. Shorten your cycle. Hey, that's it, everybody. And um, until next time, I hope to catch you on Xbox Live.